Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we just got home about an hour ago from seeing Dragon Ball Super Superhero, and let me tell you, it made us hard. I'm not kidding. That that final fight, whoo, Lord Jesus have mercy on my soul. It was fantastic. Go see it if you haven't already, but maybe watch it on like a streaming service, because whenever they're just like talking and chattering, um, yeah, it, it looks like liquid ass out of like the devil's asshole with blood coming out. It, it doesn't look good at all, but the fight scenes look good as hell. Now let's talk about why eBay and TCG player acting autonomously separate from each other is a bucket of liquid dog shit. Let's dive on into it, shall we? And if you skip this part, that's not nice. Go back and watch this part. Get hard as you hit the subscribe button so we can get to over 900 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. I didn't actually throw it. And if you skip that intro, because I know some of y'all just skip those kind of things, I'm looking at you, Big Bruce 94 Go back and watch it. I think you'll get a good laugh out of it. But subscribe so that we can get to the 1,000 ladder. Be sure to watch the video all the way through because you're going to miss some juicy information. Don't just skip to where I'm talking about something. Watch it all the way through, then make a comment. I see those analytics. So let's talk about today why eBay and TCG Player coming on together, that is coming on in, is not a good thing based upon how they worded things in this article. So let's just dive on into it and we'll discuss as we go along. So they say here today, we announced TCG Players has assigned a definitive agreement to join forces with eBay. You may read media headlines over the next few weeks to say eBay to acquire a TCG Player. While this is technically accurate, unlike a traditional acquisition upon close, TCG Player will continue operating independently. This is not good because of the fact that I've already discussed issues with TCG Player that clearly eBay just doesn't give a shit about or they're just not aware of that they're not going to fix in any way. So let's just keep on going here and then we'll discuss that. Uh, we will have the autonomy and flexibility to continue running TCG Player just as we always have. And I will continue to lead the company as CEO, ensuring our commitment to you and the entire collectibles community remains enshrined and protected long into the future. Does that include getting rid of OCG, Korean, Vietnam, Japanese, and I believe also Portuguese fucking listings? It doesn't? Okay, then I'll, I'll just go screw myself. On a more personal note, today also marks an incredible milestone for the TCG Player team. I founded TCG Player to ensure that every team member embraced the passion for collectibles, blah, 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 blah. They started it back in 2008. Good for them. Our commitment to our customers and partners. Since TCG Player's founding, we've been committed to the collectibles community, creating tools and services that empower hobbyists and retailers to connect online within your local communities to improve the exchange of the products and content you love most. Unless someone's account goes offline, but yet the card that they're selling is still on there and you think it's cheaper when it's fucking not. I am confident that with eBay's partnership, we will be even better, no you won't, position to serve the collectibles community. Sorry, I added in the no you won't. I didn't, <clears throat> I think that slipped out, excuse me. <laughs> we will have the opportunity to benefit from eBay's decades of industry experience and deep financial resources, deep financial resources, deep financial resources to expand our catalog of products. <laughs> Level up our tools and services and ensure hobbyists all over the world are able to shop from their favorite local hobby stores, aka we want to expand worldwide. That's probably why they still got the fucking Korean listings, to be honest with you. Importantly, there will be no change in how we work with customers, and you can expect the same high-quality service tools, products, and content you come to rely on TCG Player. The same customer service bullshit. Like... They have a good customer service team. Like I'm, I'm not going to deny that. This means that any orders you've placed via the TCG Player Marketplace or agreements you have in place with us will also remain unchanged. Your contacts at TCG Player also remain the same, and all business will continue as normal. As always, we'll continue to communicate and new info leading up to close and beyond. Blah blah blah. This isn't even supposed to go into effect until like the first couple months of 2023. So they've got a fucking while. So. Here are the big things with this, as you kind of heard me talking shit as I read this uh, article here from the CEO on TCG Player Infinite, which is like the article side of things for TCG Player. The biggest issue with TCG Player right now, and maybe this is why they're not addressing it, is the fact that sellers can list cards that are only allowed to be played in the OCG. For those of you who aren't familiar with competitive Yu-Gi-Oh!, there's the TCG side, which encompasses, I believe, I could be wrong, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. So any cards that are in those regions, like even if they're like German, French, Spanish, Italian, you can play those cards in your deck as long as you have proper language translations. Like even at like YCS Brazil, which I'm like what? Brazil, they speak what? Spanish, right? Like I I, that, I know my geography well enough for that, I think. <laughs> um, 
they can play English cards, but they need to have a translation ready with like Yu-Gi-Oh! Neuron or a printout of the, the Spanish version of the card so that someone who can't understand English can read it in Spanish. You know what I mean? Well, in the OCG, which is known as the official card game, TCG is trading card game, they have different countries that have their own language of cards and things like that. And they're actually, some cards are printed differently. Like I, I, I think I still have it. It's a Japanese Zodiac Tiger Mortar and it's a common, but it has more of a glossy feel to it. Like if you're an OG and you remember like the Hobby League cards from back in the day, how they had that glossy feel on the front. It was like that, but it was on a common and it was felt really glossy. And they also had the different like OCG Yu-Gi-Oh logo on the back of the OCG cards. And anything that is in the OCG, you cannot use in the TCG. So all of those Korean, even Vietnamese, Japanese listings of cards that you see on TCG player that make a card look cheaper when it's really fucking not, you cannot use those in competitive tournament play. You know, if I go to my locals and I'm playing, let's say three copies of Pot of Prosperity, but they're Korean, instant disqualification. I cannot use those because those are in the OCG. And we actually, at least I remember this back in the day around like 2010 when Duelist Revolution came out and we had Pot of Duality. Well, <laughs> we got kicked in the dick hard because Konami printed Pot of Duality as like a super rare or a rare or something in the OCG when it first came out there. And we got it here as a secret rare and it was over a hundred fucking dollars. Yeah, it, it, Pot of Prosperity is the new trend for that. And people were pissed because they're like, well, that's not fair. We should be able to use the OCG cards and things. That would completely decimate the TCG market because then it's like, well, I might as well just buy my cards over on like an OCG listing or like a like eBay, just buy the Japanese version and then you've got the cards for cheap that way. You know, there's a reason why if you go like even I think right now you can find Korean listings of Pot of Prosperity on TCG Player. There's a reason why those Korean listings are like 20, 30, 50 bucks even, which you're trying to fucking rip somebody off if you're listing it for 50 fucking dollars. I'm sorry. Um, but you cannot use those. And so, you know, little Timmy who's got an allowance of like $20 goes on there and buys like, let's say a Starlight Rare Dark Charmer and wants to play it in his deck. And then he drops it out and everybody's like, well, you fucking lose because you can't use a Korean card. Like, yeah, you got a Starlight that looks cute, boo-boo, but you can't use it. You just lost $50. And then God forbid, like you don't find that out till a fucking month after you buy it. And then you got to go to TC player and say, I can't use this in a tournament. What do I do? Like, are they going to give you a refund a month after you buy the card? Probably not. Now, am I saying that that's happened? No. And I hope to God it hasn't because that just would really grind my gears. But I know better. So I know like that's not going to happen to me, right? But not everybody may necessarily know that. Now, are casual Yu-Gi-Oh players going on TCG player to buy cards? Maybe not necessarily, but even if they're going on something like eBay and they see like a Korean listing of a card that they want for like $2, they're going to go and spend the $2 and get the card. Yeah, if they're casual, they may not be going to tournaments, but what if when they, they want to and they want to use those Korean cards they bought? Well, they wasted their money. So... Uh, TCG player needs to be working hand in hand with eBay in this sense that they'll fix this. And maybe with them, at least how the CEO worded this this uh, this article, maybe they want to go worldwide and that's why they have those Korean listings, those Japanese listings, so that those markets will go on to TCG player and give them their money to get those cards from American sellers or Japanese sellers, whatever. And, you know, maybe maybe that is the case. But if it's not the case, they need to fix that. The other thing that they need to fix as well is uh, sellers taking their storefront offline, but their cards still being shown as being listed for sale. I saw this as a huge issue with Shiba Warrior Taro when Kazuki Takahashi first passed away, God rest his soul. And the card that he had put in the anniversary pack from years ago, and it was a card called Shiba Warrior Taro that was literally his dog, like in a monster card form. And it was like 70, 75, 80 bucks at the time. And there was one listing for like $45.86 for a light play. Well, when you tried to click on it to buy it from the seller, once you went to go check out, it'd say, oh, this seller's offline, fuck you. And his, his card is being listed there as for sale, but his actual storefront is offline. So it looks like the card's $45 and once it's gone, it goes to 70, but it's already gone. And so I don't know if it's a glitch on TCG Players End. I don't know if it's the asshole who left his storefront up and just didn't take it down because he wanted to be a trolling prick. But that is something else that needs to be fixed. 
Like, honestly, it's it's so annoying. They have made fixes in the past, which is why I don't know why they don't make these fixes because they clearly have the know-how to do it. Like, I remember several years ago when Dragonic Diagram went to like one or three or something and people were swiping them off the market and they were like 20, 30 bucks. And some ass muncher was selling one for like a penny with like $2 shipping. But then it was something where like you had to buy another item to like get it shipped to you so he's selling ghost beef which is a shitty vanilla pendulum monster for three hundred dollars and it's like bro you're you're a dickwad like go touch grass so uh, they have fixed issues like that i don't know why they won't fix shit like this but it's it's just something that you need to consider the main thing i worry about moving forward is if we're going to see more ocg card listings on TCG Player, and if we're gonna start seeing more of those on eBay. Like, yeah, they're gonna have pictures on both TCG Player and eBay usually, but it's still just something I don't want on my fucking storefront. Even whenever I have English, like, as a filter, and they still pop the fuck up. Maybe that's a glitch, but either way, it needs to be fucking fixed. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Go see Dragon Ball Super Superhero, because it definitely made me hard. It was so good. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to probably uh, try and go to sleep now, because I'm tired as hell, and it's after midnight. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.